Hey there, and welcome back to another Miraculous Ladybug Season 5 trailer breakdown. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the trailer for the upcoming episode, Multiplication, which is going to be releasing very soon. Now, obviously, there are spoilers out there for things with the release of the content bible, but in my opinion, that's no fun. So let's disregard that altogether if we can. Anyway, though, after the release of the first episode of Season 5 last week with Evolution, we're actually managing to get an episode in back-to-back -back weeks with the imminent release of multiplication. And so, before that releases, it's time for me to milk this franchise and season for all it's worth to release a trailer breakdown for next episode. And so with all that being said, let's get started. So in Evolution, we saw the first clash of the new and improved Monarch against the team of Ladybug, Cat Noir, future Bunnix, and eventually, young Alex's Caney Girl. Which in turn led to Monarch losing the first of his Miraculouses, the Rabbit, to prevent him spamming its use every single episode, and saw Alex take up the Miraculous and leave the show until he's defeated. And I still don't really understand that plot point, but sure, why not? On top of that, we saw Ladybug and Cat Noir's working relationship improve with her trusting him to unify a Miraculous, and also saw Natalie tell Gabe to take a hike, as he's too smooth-brained for her to deal with anymore. So, all in all, whilst I think that the episode did have some problems, it was still fun, and it set the stage for an interesting season. The first step of which is going to be Multiplication, which will obviously feature the Mouse Miraculous as the weapon of choice. So we start off the trailer in Marinette's room, where she's back to moping about how it's all her fault that Monarch's gotten his hands on the Miraculouses, and it's her fault that the Miraculous team is gone. That she feels more alone now than ever, and she doesn't have her allies, only Cat Noir. And you know what? I'm not a huge Marinette stan, but even I don't think this is even her fault at all. Like seriously, looking back at Strike Back, what could she have possibly done differently? They needed more help, and they needed somebody who hadn't been froggied yet. She saw that Adrian wasn't froggied at the train station, and thus, he'd make the perfect ally. Is it really her fault that Adrian has a cousin who is so suspiciously identical to him that all it takes is him ruffling his hair and changing his clothes to make a foolproof disguise? Is it her fault that Adrian and Felix had chosen just this day to swap out their identities with each other that afternoon? Is it really her fault that Felix is the worst sort of person and immediately betrays her once he can simply so he can get his hands on a different Miraculous? <laughs> I don't think so. Like, I get that she made some mistakes last season, but I don't think the whole Felix debacle was really one of those mistakes. He's just a bit of an asshole. Like, don't get me wrong, I love the character, but he's a little shit and you know it. And it turns out that Ali has been here with her listening to her vent, and then Marinette tells her that since Monarch's more powerful than ever, she can't afford any distractions, and thus, no more Adrian. She's swearing off him until the crisis is averted, and much like Alia, my immediate reaction to this is, yeah, sure mate, sure you are. The denial is strong in this one. I swear she says something like this every single season, and every single season, it immediately crumbles away within an episode or two. I mean, last season she managed to hold it for like, what, four episodes? And then she was finished and back into simp mode straight away. And so, I'm kind of expecting this is going to be a little bit more of the same. Maybe there's going to be some more romantic stuff with Cat Noir as well, but it's still going to be a lot of Marinette simping for Adrian and unleashing her inner cringe for us all. And I think it's made even funnier by the fact that she says all of this as she sits in front of a collage of photos of Adrian in her bedroom. And speaking of which, she then gets a FaceTime call from the man himself, and of course, she ends up answering it right in front of the collage. Again. Ugh. She'd better hope that her head takes up the entire frame of the call, because otherwise, imagine how some would feel seeing that in their friend's bedroom. Creepy. Anyway, I don't really know the context of what he's talking about, but basically it seems like him calling her to say that he really appreciates her as his friend, and honestly, perhaps this is him opening the door to try and pursue her as a romantic interest? I do feel like that's a pretty likely scenario, all things considered, considering this is the final act of the Gabriel Legrest saga, so they do need to wrap some things up and speed things along, and so starting to develop that now would make a lot of sense. And then the next scene we see is of Marinette, Adrian, Nino and Alia outside their school, and Adrian's leaning in hard on Marinette, looking like he's going for a smooch, and I mean, surely not though, right? It's a bit odd to kiss somebody straight up in front of your friends for what seems to be their first kiss ever. Maybe I'm just a bit old-fashioned, but I feel like that's more of a private affair, plus it puts pressure on the other person. So, is this going to be one of those misinterpreted things, right? But I mean, he's clearly puckering up, isn't he? What the hell even is this scene? Very confusing. We then see Ikari goes and burst onto the scene, yelling about how she's going to destroy old Paris and bring about a new era for the city, as she starts smashing up buildings. And 
I like that they brought this villain back. I always thought she was pretty cool, and her character's one that I feel like is a little bit underused, all things considered. So it's good that she's getting another episode to develop her character a little bit more. We then see a yell that Paris needs new, modern heroes, as she lays down a beat down on Ladybug Cat Noir before she uses the power of the Mouse Miraculous to multiply and creates a whole horde of copies to smash up Paris, leaving Ladybug and Cat Noir to dodge around and simply try to survive in the last few shots of the trailer. And how is this going to work? Do they have to destroy all the Akumas to win against her, or is it just one, the original? Because I just don't see how they could possibly win this without ridiculous plot armor. Seriously, they're going to likely win because the script says they have to, and not because it makes sense. And so, that means I'm a little bit worried for the ending. I mean, I think the episode's going to be fun. It looks pretty epic and they're pulling out all the stops this season and trying new things. But at the same time, I'm not sure that the ending is going to be very satisfying or earned. And I would be happy to be wrong, but I'm just apprehensive. We then hear a woman's voice, I'm guessing Natalie's? I don't know. I feel like she's the character that's the most likely, telling Gabe that the prototype worked, to which he replies that they can move on to the next phase. So yeah, if it is Natalie, I feel like this pretty much confirms her yelling at him last episode was all a bunch of bullshit, and that she truly is the filthiest simp to ever simp. Either that, or Gabe is a god-tier manipulator. Or maybe she just realised that the best shot she has of not dying is by continuing the work they've done to try and get the wish. Although it would be funny if she did betray him in the end to try and cure herself or something. I mean, it won't actually happen, but I think it would have made for a good twist. So it's either one of those reasons, or the writers just forgot. And I mean, I guess it could be somebody else, but I'm not exactly a master of picking who voices who, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. And so that's the end of the trailer. And it looks good. I think it's going to be fun. But once again, I'm worried about the ending. I'm not sure they're going to be able to pull it off completely without it feeling rushed or a bit plot armory. But with all that being said, these were just my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of the trailer? Did it get you hyped? Maybe not? Any concerns you've got? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let me know.